हेलो एवरीवन आई एम अतुल नेगी आई एम वेलकम यू ऑल इनटू दिस आईएमएस गेट एकेडमी यूट्यूब चैनल सो वी हैव स्टार्टेड अवर फाउंडेशन कोर्स ऑन थ्योरी ऑफ मशीन एंड इन दिस थ्योरी ऑफ मशीन दिस इज द लेक्चर नंबर 13 वेयर वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस द डायनामिक्स ऑफ सिंगल स्लाइडर क्रैंक मैकेनिज्म इन द लास्ट सेशन कैनामेटिक्स पार्ट वी हैव डिस्कस वेयर वी हैव टॉक्ड अबाउट द डिस्प्लेसमेंट ऑफ द स्लाइडर velocity of the slider and acceleration of slider and we have solved some previous year gate questions also right so now in this particular sessions the forces that we need to understand here in the single slider crank mechanism right all those forces we are going to discuss in this session and most important part is the torque that is going to act on the crank part right so as i already told you like first part is the kinematics where we will discuss the motion and then after that force will come into picture right so the main idea behind discussing kinematics is what because without discussing motion you can't you cannot calculate the force part as force equals to mass into acceleration so we need to know about the acceleration part we need to know about velocity displacement and the positions that's why motion analysis is first right so in this theory of machine sessions right uh, this dynamic slider crank mechanism dynamics part of this single slider crank mechanism will end today and after that in the next sessions i will be starting flywheel chapter okay so don't miss that particular flywheel also because that flywheel will be in continuation of this one because you already know that single slider crank mechanism is going to use in ic engines so same turning moment relation i will be using in the flywheel chapter also because the common example that we will usually take in flywheel is the single slider crank mechanism because that mechanism is used in our vehicles right so let's get started everyone so but before that this is the telegram group that we have created for you people where you will be getting all the latest job notifications whatever youtube events that we are going to conduct in this youtube channel all the information you will be getting apart from that lecture pdf you will be getting in the uh, telegram group and most importantly quizzes are there which will help you in your test preparation part right so link is provided in the description you can join with that link and access all the lecture pdfs right now second part ims gate academy started the live online program for the gate preparation and in that live program more than 800 hours of sessions will be there which is totally interactive where you can directly interact with the faculty in the live class right you will be getting theory book you will be getting exercise book and gate previous year question bank apart from that live online program and most important part is the live doubt solving uh, support 12 mentorship sessions where you can interact with the faculty one to one and discuss your challenges whatever concerns you are having in your gate preparation part you can discuss with the faculty one to one right and online test series is there where you will be getting test from chapter level subject level and full length mock test also right so if you want to join this ims gate academy live online program you can directly call on this number to book a free counseling session right and you will get to know more about the live online program now we will start the our session with the dynamics analysis part but before that if you remember in the last session i have given you this question as a homework right this question i have given you as a homework so in this question you need to calculate the velocity right so if you see this particular question for given configuration speed of the slider they are asking speed of the slider they are asking right and we have written direct relation i hope many students has solved already so let me know about your answers guys in the chat box what is the answer you got after solving this particular question tell me so velocity of a slider that we are having is vs which is r omega sin theta Plus sine two theta divided by n divided by two n. It is there. So this is the formula we are having. Relation of the velocity of slider in terms of crank angle theta. Now the question is, this is slider connecting rod and crank. What about this angle? Can you tell me what will be the angle? Because this angle we need to know, right? Without this angle theta, we cannot calculate. we cannot calculate the velocity of the slider right so as 90 degree they have given between crank and connecting rod this is a right angle triangle it will be forming 
So using trigonometry, I will be getting the theta answer also. So let us write uh, this 10 theta. Okay, so in front of angle, this will be the perpendicular, this one will be base. So 240 divided by 60. So from here, you will be getting the answer of theta. So whatever answer of theta you will be getting, that theta value I will be putting in this particular uh, relation and I will get the answer of velocity of slider. Right, so very easy problem. In the uh, yesterday's session, we have discussed all important points regarding velocity of slider, acceleration of slider and also we have talked about angular velocity of connecting rod from which question has not been asked till now in the gate. Okay, and I also told you angular acceleration of connecting rod also we can calculate very easily, right. So, just calculate the this theta value and put it in this particular equation, you will get the answer. Is that clear everyone? So, put the values and you will get the answer. So, theta value approximately you will be getting 75.96, 75.96 you will be getting approx value of theta and if you put this theta value in this equation velocity of slider okay velocity of slider you will be getting approximately 0 0.617 0 0.617 meter per second this will be the answer okay this will be the answer 0 0.617 meter per second velocity of slider right is that clear so this was the question okay so yesterday uh, lecture we have discussed all those things now coming to the dynamics part right in dynamics part, we are concerned about the forces that is going to act, that is going to act on the single slider crank mechanism, starting with the slider, then connecting rod, then crank, like that we will connect all the links here, okay, we will connect all the links, so first of all, we will be talking about, okay, slider, then we will talk about connecting rod. Then we will talk about the crank. Okay, so the reason behind slider we have taken first because the input motion is provided to the slider. Then that particular input motion transferred to connecting rod and from connecting rod to crank. That will be the order here. If it is a case of IC engine because the input motion is provided at the slider, right? Because of the expansion of gases in four stroke engine, what is going to happen? Suction, okay, then compression is going to happen. So, in that particular case, when heat is added, there will be expansion that because of that expansion of the combustion gases, what will happen? There will be net force acting on the slider and when net force acting on the slider is there, it will try to reciprocate in the cylinder itself and because of that connecting rod will move and then finally crank will start rotating. That's how the IC engine or four stroke engine is going to work, right? Now see. So this is our single slider crank mechanism, right? So let us first mention the fixed part. Okay, now very important part. Okay, so first of all, the very first part that we need to calculate here is piston effort. Piston effort, right? Now, piston effort is the net force acting on the piston. It is the net force. Net force. Acting on the piston. Or even we can say slider also. There is no issue. Piston we are calling with respect to the IC engine part, right? Net force acting on the piston. Now, this is the slider. Okay, this slider is there, then connecting rod and the crank. So, how you will write this piston effort? Okay. As I told you in IC engine, what is going to happen? There will be expansion of gases here in the power stroke. That power stroke, whenever the power stroke happens, that expansion of gases will apply a force on the slider or this piston. So, there will be force because of the gases okay now 
this uh, forces will be there because of the gases right that is the one thing friction will also be there right now if it is a horizontal ic engine okay horizontal ic engine is there so in that case weight will not be considered but if it is vertical weight is definitely going to be considered right so that part is also there so, but in this case weight will not be considering then uh, we'll be having inertia force plus minus uh, we'll be keeping the sign plus minus and I will tell you in which case it will be plus and in which case it will be negative. Minus friction force will be there. Okay. And then again plus minus uh, weight. So in general this relation is going to be there. First of all the force because of the gases. So there will be pressure P1 A1 minus P2 A2. Now what is P1 and what is P2? P1 will be the force here. Try to understand. P1 will be the force here and P2 will be, uh, P1 is the pressure here and P2 is the pressure outside this slider part. So the net force is going to be acting on the slider. Okay. Net force is going to act on the slider here. So this is P1. So P1 into A1 minus P2 into A2. So net force because of the expansion of the gases is going to act on the slider. That is the first part. Second part I discuss here is the inertia force. Very important example here, you need to understand. See. Right, so this is IDC. This is ODC. Right? Now what happens here? Let's suppose this is the uh, mid of this IDC and ODC part. Okay, now see, during the journey of from IDC to ODC, okay, during the journey from IDC to ODC, what happens? If I talk about the midway, from IDC to midway, what is going to happen? Slider is going to accelerate. Slider is going to accelerate. So, direction of acceleration is like this. But after this mid point, it is going to de-accelerate. Okay, after this midpoint, it is going to deaccelerate. So, acceleration will be in this direction. Is this point clear? Now, why the point is, you need to understand here, why it is going to accelerate up to midpoint? Because after the midpoint, it is going to retard. Obviously, it has to retard because at the ODC point or outer dead center, it has to stop. That's why after the midpoint, it is going to retard so that it will stop at ODC. So once the motion has started from IDC, acceleration is going to be increased. Okay, positive acceleration is there. Okay, acceleration is like this, towards in the direction of motion, till this midpoint and after that retardation comes. So retardation comes, opposite acceleration is going to be there. Okay, now as you already know that inertia force is going to act opposite to the acceleration part. So that's why, so that's why inertia force is going to act in the half of the journey like this and another half of the journey it will be acting like this. So this is the understanding you should be having right. So when the inertia force is going to act in the right direction or in the left direction it depends upon the acceleration direction. So for acceleration you should remember when the piston start its journey acceleration will be in the direction of motion of slider but after the midpoint it is going to be opposite. So that the retardation comes and when retardation comes, it will definitely stop at ODC. It cannot stop having same acceleration in the direction of slider only. Okay, if the acceleration direction is in this, uh, in the direction of motion of slider only, then how it will stop at ODC? It is not possible. It will stop at ODC when the acceleration direction is opposite, that is retardation comes. Right, so this part is clear, okay. Now, uh, friction force is there. So, friction force will be opposite to that. Opposite to the, basically, it will oppose the relative motion of the slider, right? That is there. Now, weight of the piston or the slider, it will be there when it is a vertical cylinder, for example. So, this is the case of horizontal cylinder. Now, coming to the vertical engine. And in vertical engines, we will have TDC, top dead center and bottom dead center. Right. 
right like this it is there. Okay, like this it will be there. Fine. Okay. Top dead center, bottom dead center. When the piston or slider is moving from top dead center to bottom dead center, then the weight will be considered okay, positively. But when it is moving from BDC to TDC, negative will be there because weight of a piston will support the motion when the motion is from TDC to BDC. But when the motion is from BDC to TDC, in that case, weight will oppose the motion. So, in that way we can understand when we have to use positive and when we have to use negative sign, right. So, in this case you need to write from TDC to BDC, right. What will happen? positive sign will be considering for the weight from BDC to TDC negative because that weight is going to oppose the motion that is why that is the reason we will be using negative sign okay and here the inertia force I hope it is clear right is it right so that again same concept will be valid here but in this case of horizontal cylinder weight is not going to come right. So, that is what the net force acting on the piston okay or which is driving the piston basically because of that net force only piston is driving okay piston is moving basically here. So, that force we can easily calculate. So, all the terms in this particular formula we have discussed completely. Now, now coming to the next part that is connecting rod okay. So, for that first of all I will draw the uh, some basic diagram here. Now see, this is the FP piston effort, this is the connecting rod we are having, like this. Now uh, here in this case we need to consider one angle here, okay, we have not mentioned angles this angle is theta, crank rotation and connecting rod rotation is mentioned by beta. Theta is the crank rotation angle and beta is what the rotation of the connecting rod, right. Now, see, this angle is beta. Now, the force acting on the connecting rod, let us uh, mention the name here is Fc. Force acting on the connecting rod is Fc. right okay fine now in this case how we will write okay force force acting on connecting rod connecting rod right so see here so this fc part okay so we can write Fp equals to Fc cos beta. So, your Fc that is force acting on the connecting rod will be Fp divided by cos beta, Fp divided by cos beta right. So, that will be the connecting rod force. Now, that connecting rod force further transmit to the crank right. So, like that we are going to calculate. So, force acting on the connecting rod we have calculated. Now, coming to the crank part. Okay, coming to the crank part. So, first we have discussed the piston effort here. Okay, piston effort we have discussed. Second, force acting on the connecting rod. Now, the third part that is on the crank. Okay or basically we should write it as crank effort
तो क्रैंक एफर्ट इज द फोर्स विच इज रिस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर द रोटेशन विच इज रिस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर द रोटेशन ओके सो लेट मी हेल्प यू इन अंडरस्टैंडिंग दिस क्रैंक एफर्ट ऑल्सो ओके सो लेट एस फर्स्ट ड्रॉ द डायग्राम हेयर Right, I hope it is clear. So this is a simple sliding crank mechanism I have shown. Now, as I told you that there is a connecting rod force, force acting on the connecting rod, right? So along the connecting rod, that will force will be there. Along the connecting rod, that force will be there. Okay, fine. Now, one interesting thing that you need to understand here is, so okay, let first mention the angles. This is beta. This is theta. This angle is theta. Now, very important point. From the horizontal, this connecting rod force will be again beta. But this angle will be theta. Right? Theta and beta, both the angles are clear. Is it clear to everyone? Right? So, this theta is there. So, this theta and this is beta. Now, as I told you, this is what we are having as force on the connecting rod. Now the crank effort, okay, crank effort. So let us uh, write it like this: F, okay, F uh, C double N, so that there will not be any confusion. Force on connecting rod I have mentioned like this, okay. So you should not be confused here. So this is on the connecting rod. In this diagram, is it clear? So just to be more clear, I have mentioned uh, force on connecting rod like this. Now this force, if I take the vertical component of this force on the crank. what it will be okay so please try to observe here force on the connecting rod uh, crank right now see it is perpendicular to the crank and this is what known as crank effort this force is known as crank effort that force is actually responsible for the rotation of the crank and that force is perpendicular to this crank right and it will be equals to it will be equals to a uh, vertical component of this connecting rod force into sin theta plus beta sin theta plus beta it is there right it is sin theta plus beta so this crank effort this is the force which is responsible for the rotation of the crank please write down this point also okay crank effort this is what the force responsible for for the rotation of the crank okay force responsible for the rotation of the crank right that is what the crank effort here clear everyone so that crank effort equals to connecting rod force multiplied by sin theta plus beta just i have taken the vertical component of this force if i take vertical component of this force it will be like this perpendicular to the crank perpendicular to the crank so this is the crank and this is the crank effort force so perpendicular to this crank this force is acting which is responsible for rotation of the crank now next term next parameter that we need to calculate here is the torque or the turning moment acting on the crank because ultimately output motion we are getting at the crank so we need to understand what is the torque that is going to be acting on the crank that torque value we need to remember here okay very important formula here and if you uh, if i solve previous year gate question then you will understand there are two three questions they have asked directly from the 
turning moment or the torque value in the gate examination. So directly I need to remember that torque or turning moment formula here. Okay. Is that clear? Is this diagram is clear everyone? So previously we have calculated what the connecting rod, force acting on the connecting rod. This will be there. Okay. One more thing they can ask, force acting on the cylinder that is uh, also called as normal thrust force. Force acting on the cylinder part. Okay. See. Force acting on the cylinder. How you will calculate? Force acting on the cylinder. Right. So, let us write that part also. force acting on the cylinder okay so it will be equals to fc sin beta okay and fc value everyone knows that it is fp divided by cos beta into sin beta so ultimately it will be this fn value fp 10 beta right it will be like this is it clear everyone so we have calculated see we have started with the piston effort force that is the net force acting on the piston so that part we have calculated then further that force is going to transmit it to the connecting rod then from connecting rod to the crank okay we need to understand force as well as motion will transmit from one link to another link right so, piston effort, then we have a force acting on the connecting rod, on the cylinder also, Fn value, right. So, Fc sin beta, this vertical component will be equals to Fn. And Fc already we have calculated as Fp divided by cos beta because Fp equals to Fc cos beta, right. So, uh, let me just, yes, close the cylinder part. this is fp okay so then crank effort also calculated now next important parameter as i told you is turning moment right turning moment Okay, now see, turning moment or basically you can also call it as a torque, the torque value equals to this crank effort, crank effort value is connecting rod force sin theta plus beta, that crank effort force multiplied by the crank radius fr, uh, radius r, crank radius, this crank effort value is connecting rod force multiplied by sin theta plus beta sin theta plus beta multiplied by the crank radius r now connecting rod force how we have calculated fp divided by cos beta connecting rod force is fp divided by cos beta right so, multiplied by sin theta plus beta into r. So, why we want to convert this turning moment value in terms of fp? Because the fp value will be given to us because that is the input motion. Input motion is provided to the slider or the piston. So, that input motion information we will be having. That is why this fp value we will be writing in the turning moment, not this connecting force, right? So, this uh, sin theta plus beta divided by cos beta is there into r. Now, if I simplify this one using basic trigonometry relations, I will be getting one relation. 
that relation is very very important for gate examination not only in gate other competitive examinations very very important formula turning moment on the crank of a single slider crank mechanism right now so let us write that relation here okay fp into r i will be writing here then sin theta plus sin 2 theta because we have to replace beta also right n square sin square theta this is the formula we will be having if p piston effort multiplied by the r that is the crank radius multiplied by this fraction look at this expression completely sin theta plus sin 2 theta divided by 2 into 1 root n square minus sin square theta this exact formula you need to remember right very very important for gate examination okay so you need to remember this one right is it clear everyone tell me first so that is what the dynamic analysis will be having in a single slider crank mechanism that is what the dynamic analysis part in kinematics velocity analysis we have done angular acceleration analysis we have done displacement of a slider we have discussed and i've told you also very important question okay what was the question they will provide you the displacement of the slider they will provide you the displacement of the slider they will not give you the theta value okay they will provide the displacement of slider from that displacement of slider we need to calculate theta because without the value of theta we cannot solve any problem right because in the problem they will be asking velocity or acceleration of slider or they might be asking about this part also uh, this turning moment for this also theta is required right but sometimes some information will not be provided directly in the examination and that's why that problem becomes difficult or tough because if you you don't know how to relate the given information with that information which is required in the formula okay if question is there and all the information is provided directly which is what used in the formula then that question becomes very easy everyone will be able to solve it are you getting the point everyone will be able to solve it without any doubt so but problem comes when the formula is known like everyone knows the formula but the data or the information which is required in the formula it is not given in the question if it is not given how to calculate that information how to calculate that parameter that plays a very important role so we need to understand all the parameters how they are going to relate with each other for example i told you the displacement of slider with the crank rotation part displacement of the slider with the crank rotation part okay so that is very very important you might see a problem in the gate examination from that one till now all the question that came regarding velocity also turning moment also or force calculation also are totally directly formula based are all problems whatever they have asked till now are all direct formula based but if sometimes direct formula based question doesn't come then it becomes a tough question then at that point because we are habituated of solving questions where directly we can use the formula and all the data is given directly in the question but that doesn't happen every time right sometime we need to use our brain and think about how thing uh, different parameters are connected what kind of relationship they are having so that we can calculate another parameter and from that parameter we will get the answer right so fine so uh, we have discussed completely the dynamic analysis part okay and uh, previously we have solved question also regarding the velocity part any doubt till now till this point if you have so you can ask in the chat box guys right now after that we will be solving uh, questions right we will be solving questions that was asked in the examination right starting with this problem this is the question first of all okay everyone 
please solve this question and tell me your answer. So, again very simple straight direct formula based question C. Slider crank mechanism they have given crank radius 200 mm and connecting rod length 800 mm. Both the uh, dimensions are provided. Crank rotating at 600 rpm. Okay. So, rpm they have given right. For crank they have not given omega but they have given rpm. rpm is 600 revolutions per minute. So, if I have to calculate omega it will be what 2 pi n. 2 pi n by 60 this formula we need to use. pi n by 60 radian per second. This is the formula we have to use here. Fine. Okay. In the configuration so uh, shown here, this configuration they are talking about, crank makes an angle of 90 degree with the sliding direction. So, crank is making an angle 90 degree with the sliding direction. Okay. Fine. And the force of 5, uh, force of 5 kilo Newton, force of 5 kilo Newton is acting on the slider. Okay. Directly piston effort value they have provided directly the piston effort value is provided here which is 5 kilo Newton neglecting the inertia forces turning moment on the crank is turning moment in the crank is direct formula we have to use okay directly the formula we have to use for the calculation of this turning moment on the crank right so please do it fast everyone and tell me your answers okay And very important part here is crank is having angle 90 degree with respect to this sliding direction, right? Okay, everyone. So, the formula first of all. sin theta plus sin 2 theta 2 into under root n square minus sin square theta. This is the formula we are having, right? Now, look at the data they have given. Theta value 90 degree, 90 degree it is there. So, if I put 90 degree sin 90, okay, but sin 2 into theta that is sin 180, it becomes 0, okay. This part becomes 0 because sin 2 theta is what 0 here. Now, the values if I put here, okay, Fp 5 kilo Newton into uh, crank radius, crank radius they have provided us. 200 mm which will be written as 0 0.2 in terms of meter. So, finally, the turning moment answer will be 1 kilo Newton meter that is what the answer we are having. Done everyone. One kilo Newton meter is the answer here for this particular question. Right, very simple problem they have asked, very very simple. Done? Okay. Now, one more problem they have asked. Okay. That also we will see here. Yes. This one. This is what the question they have asked. Slider crank mechanism shown in figure. At some instant, crank is having 45 degree. Okay. So, let us mention the crank angle here. Crank is having 45 degree. Okay. And force 40 Newton is acting towards the left on the slider. Okay. Fine. 14 Newton they have mentioned. Yes, mechanical volt, your answer is correct one for the previous problem. The length of the crank is three, uh, 30 mm and the connecting rod is 70 mm. Okay. So, dimensions are also provided. This is 30, this is 70. 
right in terms of mm it is there so let me write mm Thirty and seventy mm. Okay, fine. Ignoring the effect of gravity, friction, and inertial forces, the magnitude of the crankshaft torque, magnitude of the crankshaft torque, they are saying, needed to keep the mechanism in equilibrium. Needed to keep the mechanism in equilibrium. Again, they are asking the torque value, right? So calculate everyone, because see now the point is. to remain in equilibrium means what see because of this movement of the slider connecting rod uh, there will be force on the connecting rod and that force is going to act on the crank and then finally rotation in the crank will be there so why the rotation in the crank because of there is torque some turning moment is acting now same turning moment is if i apply if i say if i apply same turning moment if i apply same turning moment in the opposite direction it will remain in equilibrium it will remain in equilibrium right so that is what they are asking the turning moment on the crank same formula everything is same okay so just apply the direct formula and tell me your answers okay everyone please solve and tell me your answers for this particular question do it fast direct formula we have okay so that we can calculate the answer very easily do it fast everyone This is the formula we are having. Theta already they have given forty five. Okay, all the values you can put. N value will be what seventy by thirty. Okay, N is what the ratio of L by R connecting rod length divided by the crank radius. So that value will be what N theta forty five. F P value they have given us forty newton. Crank radius thirty mm. All the information is provided in this particular question. Directly you have to put all the values to get the answer of turning moment. Right. so i'm waiting for your answer please tell me your answers first here okay one point one three something will be the answer right mechanical world for this particular question answer will be 1.13 okay so please cross check your answers as well everyone one 1.13 newton meter One point one three newton meter will be the answer, right? Done, everyone. Okay. So till this particular lecture, we have almost completed our chapter first of simple mechanism, right? So let me give you all the basic details that we have discussed here, guys. See, we have started with the kinematic link. we have started with the kinematic link what is kinematic link okay different types of kinematic link we have discussed what is the characteristics of the kinematic link all those points we have discussed relative motion and it has to be a resistant body that are the characteristics of kinematic link different types of kinematic links like rigid link okay we'll be having flexible link we can have a fluid link 
another uh, possibility is what binary link ternary link quaternary link so like that different classification and its types and also its characteristics we have discussed with the kinematic link the very first part after this we have discussed kinematic joint because those kinematic link different kinematic link will definitely get joined there will be a connection and connection will be connection will be formed by the joint so that different kind of joints will be having like ternary joint turning joint okay sliding joint spherical joint cylindrical joint screw joint so many joints will be there surface contact joint will be there point contact joint will be there self close joint will be there based on closure okay force close joint will be there whenever two links get connected there will be a connection there will be a joint that is what kinematic joint then after that we have discussed about the kinematic chain okay when different links get connected here we will be getting kinematic chain it can be closed it can be open now in the kinematic chain in the closed kinematic chain if any one member is fixed then what we are getting mechanism so this mechanism definition we have discussed in detail after that inversions we have discussed and degree of freedom very important topic that we have discussed in detail okay in four bar mechanism for four bar mechanism we have discussed the grashof's law in four bar mechanism what we have discussed grashof's law we have discussed right so these are the parts we have discussed after four bar mechanism single slider crank mechanism we have discussed single slider crank mechanism okay and two important mechanisms that we have discussed which are very important with respect to gate examination crank slotted quick return motion mechanisms and withworth quick return motion mechanism okay so two different quick return motion mechanisms we have discussed after that velocity analysis we have discussed where two different approaches relative velocity concept and i center concept then acceleration analysis right in velocity analysis two different approaches we have used relative velocity and another was i center approach and in i center approach we have used angular velocity ratio theorem angular velocity ratio theorem and i have told you also every year question is coming from the velocity analysis and we have solved almost all previous year questions first we have solved with relative velocity approach in which we have drawn what velocity diagram and after that in i center approach we have used angular velocity ratio theorem right and i have told you also in whichever method you are comfortable that method you should be using but as a suggestion from my side i will definitely suggest use angular velocity ratio theorem because in angular velocity ratio theorem you will be taking only less time very less time will be required to solve a question and only one point is what very important that is the location of i centers for that you need to have a some basic knowledge basic fundamental knowledge regarding the i center instantaneous center how to locate it and i have told you only one point i center will lie on a line perpendicular to the velocity vector perpendicular to the direction of velocity vector i center will be there right and three uh, i think four to five different cases also we have discussed so if you have remembered those four to five cases then it will be very easy for you to locate the i centers and once it is clear all the i center locations are clear then directly use angular velocity ratio theorem your up uh, your solution okay you will never face in the solution part 
okay you will easily get the solution right after that acceleration analysis after that acceleration analysis and finally kinematic dynamic analysis of single slider crank mechanism right so these are the topics that we have covered in simple mechanism chapter right these are the total topics that we have covered in simple mechanism and I can tell you all the basic fundamental things we have discussed in detail. Some of the PYQs also we have solved. Okay. Still, if you have any doubt or any question in this particular topic, okay, or in the chapter simple mechanism, please mention in the comment box. I will definitely clear all those doubts in the upcoming sessions. Right. So, in foundation course, our intention is to build the concepts, to build the fundamental knowledge that is what required in that particular subject more and more questions we are going to discuss in the upcoming uh, events right so this foundation course is all about the basic fundamental knowledge still we are solving some pyqs also like in velocity analysis i've solved all the questions of pyq right now next uh, sessions will be on the flywheel right and flywheel we will discuss in detail again all the usage also we will be discussing where actually flywheel is used how to analyze uh, flywheel that also part we are going to discuss and also the previous air questions from the gate examination right and after that as i already told you gear chapter is coming okay so you don't need to worry about any of the topics in the theory of machine if you are preparing for the gate examination all basic fundamental knowledge will be discussed here and also pyq and if you want any anything apart from the topics that we are discussing any specific topic from the theory of machine with respect to gates labius any of the topic if you have any doubt or any confusion please mention in the comment box we will definitely discuss in the upcoming sessions here right so thank you so much for today's session guys in the next session flywheel we are going to start right thank you so much